Thanks for dropping in. This is a 3D printed Braille cell. I designed it two years ago to help students who are just beginning to learn Braille characters. Hidden beneath each button is an absurdly small plastic spring that gives the model a nice snappy click. Hey, it still works. But I think the design could be a lot better. Let's give it a critical look. First, the design is way too complex. Each cell has 19 individual parts, 6 springs, 12 button caps, and a case to hold everything together. That's a lot to print and assemble, especially if you're making multiple copies. Next, despite my attempts to scale the spring mechanism down, the overall braille cell is still way too big. That's a waste of filament and print time. And finally, the buttons. Well, they're really stiff. If you use this long enough, your fingers will get sore. And that's even worse for younger students, or more likely to need this tool. So with those challenges in mind, let's make something better. This is the new 3D printed Braille cell. The design is inspired by my recent pop fidgets. Instead of six individual springs, it uses a single TPU gasket, which flexes to allow the buttons to pop back and forth this also reduces the number of parts from 19 down to 8. That's not the only reason to ditch the springs. The gasket requires less vertical space, so this new braille cell is half the original's height. The buttons are also smaller. They shrunk from 10 millimeters in diameter down to 6. That happens to be four times the scale of a standard braille dot. Okay, but how do the buttons click? That's quite a bit softer, although your results will depend on the filament used. This braille cell uses 92A TPU by filamentum. The 92 refers to its sure A hardness. The higher the number, the more stiff you can expect the buttons to feel. Some manufacturers include this value on the filament spool or packaging, but many others don't list it at all. So if you plan on printing this design, Look for filaments that are explicitly labeled 92A, or even softer. Speaking of filaments, a huge part of this braille cell update is thanks to Courtney of Filament Stories and her daughter Reese. Courtney has a truly impressive filament library, which she used to print tons of prototype braille cells in a wide range of flexible materials. As a regular braille reader, Reese provided incredible feedback to make the design more user friendly. Here's just a couple of improvements that came directly from that feedback. The earliest prototypes of the braille cell wouldn't sit flat when displaying certain characters, but adding a wall around the base guarantees that there will always be an even surface for the cell to rest on. The wall also provides a nice indication of which side of the cell is down. Since the braille cell buttons are modeled after raised dots, I jumped to the conclusion that buttons with a domed top would be best. Testing proved my assumptions wrong, and thanks to those results, the braille cell comes in round and flat styles, just like my pop fidget designs. Use whichever option is most comfortable for your fingers. The feedback also led to an entirely new layout option. This 8 cell array greatly extends the usefulness of the project beyond teaching individual characters. I might even revisit this in the future to create an even larger multi-row array. Let me know if that's something you want to see. The final mechanical improvement has more to do with printing braille cells than using them. The prints I've shared so far have rigid PLA cases with embedded TPU gaskets. Just like the pop fidgets I released earlier this year, these gaskets are completely sealed inside the print. This requires either a multi-material printer or some tricky mid-print pausing to insert those TPU gaskets. If that sounds like too much work, you can avoid those challenges with this, a case that's entirely TPU. This option is available both in the 8 cell and single cell varieties. When you load up this case for printing, don't be surprised if your slicer reveals some interesting voids modeled directly in the design. These empty spots give the braille buttons a softer and more uniform pop. Thanks go to my friend Ed for providing this suggestion. In addition to these functional improvements, 
I have another customization option to share. This simpler mechanism makes it possible to shrink the braille cell down even more. This print has 4.5 millimeter buttons instead of the default 6 millimeter ones. That's another 25% reduction in size. This might be a good option for portability or as a step toward reading smaller braille text. Of course, we might be able to go even smaller. So keep an eye out for future remixes as I continue to work on this design. The final improvement is not something you're going to find inside the model. The majority of my designs are posted under a Creative Commons attribution license. As long as you let people know where the model came from, that license lets you print, remix, or even sell copies. No fee or subscription required. To get this model to as many people as possible, I want to get rid of even that attribution requirement. So this project is shared under a public domain license. You're free to use this model without restrictions and without crediting the source. You know the phrase, all rights reserved? Well, this is no rights reserved. Have at it. Although if you do something awesome, I'd love to hear about it. It's just not required by the license to do so. That's all I have for the project for this week, but it's not the last video. Courtney and Reese have released a separate video on this design. I've linked to their short above and in the video description, so check it out. Until next time, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Having these final models here makes it look like I knew what I was doing. But the truth is, this took a lot of trial and error, and hundreds of prototypes. Here are just a few of the prototypes that I printed but ultimately rejected, including some that required hardware to screw everything together. While I didn't consider these quite up to snuff, they are technically functional, so I'll be giving these away along with my other fidgets at Remurf. If you want a super exclusive, never released model, that would be a good opportunity to get one. All right, see you next time.